All right. Welcome to the Dr. Lexi show today. I have a very special guest that everybody knows about anyway. <laughs> Mary Beth Tomore, like Amore. There you go. You yes. Got it. And then world S-I-U-G-R, selective intrauterine growth restriction, which we don't use the term I-U-G-R anymore. We use- Fetal growth restriction. Yep. F-G-R. So we're going to reach out to these world people and be like, hey, maybe it should be world S-F-G-R. Time to update. Time, yes. Yeah. Agreed. It's been F-G-R for a while now. I feel like a good couple yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It takes like, I think I read data one day. It takes like five to 15 or something large amounts of years for things to actually happen once they're recommended. Oh my Especially gosh. medicine. Okay. So for the twin days, we have selective IUGR, yep. which is intrauterine growth restriction, which now we don't use that term. Correct. We use fetal growth restriction. restriction. So I'm just going to say selective growth restriction, I guess, yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. And um, from my standpoint, definition wise, and these, I always tell people too, a lot of the information we use on ultrasounds mm-hmm. are based on singletons. So yeah. one baby. Yeah. And that's still where almost all, if not all, of a lot the, of the data are. comes from. There is some research being done of like, should we be using different data, i.e. twin data yeah. on ultrasounds for twins? That would seem like it makes sense. But, I mean, we, I think you know, we would have enough content and enough data at this point. It's just like we talked about before. Mm-hmm. It takes a long time to implement those things. Yeah. So right now, as an FYI, when you're getting information on twins and we say that twin is growth restricted, <laughs> we are basing it on a growth curve of a single twin. So 10. Mm-hmm. We just, really just, are. Just true, true facts. Yeah. So when we say growth restriction for a twin pregnancy, mm-hmm. we are still saying a couple of things. One either the overall estimated weight is less than 10%. Correct. Or two, the abdominal circumference is less Less than than 10%. 10. Mm -hmm. For twins, I'll put in a third little thing where you might not have growth restriction per se, but if you look at the two growths and the difference between the two is greater than 20%, we call them discordant. Yep. Mm -hmm. And for people that have twins, if one of your baby's growths, let's say, is around 18%. 18%. Yeah. And the other is 99%. Yes. They're going to ultimately have a discordance of greater than 20%. Mm-hmm. So you have one baby that's normally grown yep. and the other that's bigger. Right. That is not as concerning as a general, you know, statement versus if you had one that was the 18th percentile and the other one is 1%. Right. Right. Then that's where we have selective, selective. growth restriction. Mm-hmm. And I think so. it's important that when we talk about die, die twins, we allow that discordance to be a little bit more before we get worried. Again, because they're two siblings being born at the same time. So you you kind of allow a little bit more. But when we talk about the babies that are sharing, we want our sharing to be equal. Yes. So when we talk about your Modi twins, your identical twins, then we're, we're a little, we get a little more concerned earlier mm-hmm. and we use that, we have a little tighter gauge, if you yes. will, when we talk about yeah. discordance. And that's why with, twins, you have growth ultrasounds all the time, regardless really of whether they're mm-hmm. Modi, yeah. Modi, Momo, they're all still getting all. serial growth ultrasounds typically every four weeks. Right. And that's a standard because yep. you could have two placentas, two sacs, Di Di, mm-hmm. and one's going to be larger than the other, smaller than the other. Yeah. It's more common, I would say, to see complications like growth restriction when they share one placenta. Correct. Because all the complications it's are- because you have everything's on the table. Everything's all on the, the table. time. That Jack and Jill. Yeah, and, until those babies <laughs> come out, everything is always everything. possible. Everything. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, I think for selective growth restriction, I, the main comment I think really is doing the growth regularly, mm-hmm. which we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do have questions on how they do a growth ultrasound, download on that drlexihill.com backslash growth. Yep. And it actually takes what you generate on an ultrasound where you get the percentages yep. and the estimated weeks and days mm-hmm. and explains it. Yep. Very so well. You can look at it. And um, we measure the head around it, side to side, upper arm bone, upper leg bone, around the belly. Yep. And then we give you an estimation. Yep. And it is an estimation. estimation. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. But it's an estimation. It's an estimation. Mm-hmm. Tell me really quick to the hashtag or your thing on Instagram and all that. Um, I am Sonawise Ultrasound on Instagram. I mean, I'm technically on TikTok. <laughs> is it the same thing? Under, it- I think it's Sono.eyes. That's what I'm on TikTok. And okay. of course, I'm on LinkedIn. Yes. Things like that. So all the things. Yes. All the things. Okay. Facebook too. But really my Instagram is where the 
Okay. Where the majority of my content lies. Well, today we did a lot of discussion about twins. Thank you very much to Mary Beth Tamore for all of her help and guidance. Thank you for having me. Everything ultrasound related, which is fantastic. <laughs> and we'll have you back again as long as you'll come back. Uh, anytime. We'll, have, we'll make it yep. a regular stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we hope to have expanded your knowledge, developed some skills. And as always, we want to have an impact on you and your pregnancy. I'm Dr. Lexi wishing you a happy and healthy pregnancy. Mm-hmm.